I'm Jonah Buchanan, and in this video, what we're going to do is to look at Apple's AU effects. Not logics, but Apple's. What do I mean? Well, we'll get to that. Let's just have a listen to the track first, and then we're going to go for a little bit of a dive. Okay, so here is our backing track, which um, in particular features this beat loop, which I've just dragged in from Apple Loops and which I've put in tune with the track. Now then, when I say a bit of a dive, what do I mean? Well, let's just solo this for a moment and let's come to the audio effects. Now, we know that Logic's long list of effects are organized into different categories. And you'll know as well that if you own third-party plugins, maybe from FabFilter or SoundToys or any of the other hundreds of suppliers of third-party plugins, they exist down here in the audio units folder. Sure enough, you can see that I've got folders for a couple of different manufacturers. But I've also got a range of effects which you've got too from Apple. Now these are system plugins. In other words, these are audio processing um, sort of tools which exist across the kind of Apple platform. And of course, because they're audio unit based, they're available to us within Logic. But I'll bet you've ignored them because of course, the much more pretty, useful Logic specific plugins exist in these folders here. But there are a couple of absolute gems here which I've been playing with recently and which I want to kind of bring your attention to. And the first one of those is AU New Pitch. I don't really know why it's called New Pitch because pitch is not new as a concept. I think it must mean that effectively we have an opportunity to create a new pitch from this plugin. Now then, you can see straight away what I mean about the user interface. It kind of looks like something out of a math textbook. But can you think of a plugin that Logic make, or at least a plugin that exists and has been made for Logic, that allows you to just manipulate pitch like this? Neither can I. So that's two octaves in either direction. So we've got a kind of central point. Look at that, even the usual sort of tricks and clicks like being able to press down option and clicking on the central ball doesn't bring it back to the zero point, which it would in any Logic plugin. This isn't a Logic plugin, remember, this is an Apple AU plugin. So effectively what I've got here isn't a vary speed control, which you might expect. Vary speed therefore sort of changing time and pitch together. The pitch is remaining completely consistent. Effectively what I've got here is literally a slider to just control pitch. And it sort of makes me think that this might be quite interesting to bring to our track and to do some interesting pitch man uh, manipulation with it. So your next question might understandably be, are these plugins automatable? Yep. Should we have a go? Okay, so I'll come out of solo mode and what I'm going to do is to select latch mode as I normally would for writing automation. And in fact, we'll do this with the uh, automation lane open. Remember, just press A to open automation. I'm gonna press play and we'll record some AU new pitch data. Okay, I don't like the beginning of this. I think it starts a little high. So what I'm gonna do is just come back to read mode for a moment. And what we'll do is we'll kind of get rid of these early points by dragging one of these maybe back to this point. So effectively what I've got now is a few little pitch ramp moments and that's being just written in for this particular plugin. And that's now just giving us this kind of weird, slightly blurry, smudged out thing. Okay, so that's one of the plugins. It's the only dial that I've got available apart from a render quality option, which I'm assuming um, therefore is effectively um, just gonna tax the CPU, depending on how high quality I want the results to be. Maximum seems like a good place to start and the computer certainly not having any trouble with it. So effectively what I've done is just to record um, some uh, pitch scale changes there um, to start with. 
Okay, so what other plugins have we got beyond pitch? Well, we'll look at plenty more of these in future videos because I think this might be a little mine of some quite interesting ideas. But just to give our sound a slightly different kind of perspective, I'm going to come back into the Apple folder and we're going to come to the AU Bandpass plugin. Now, a bit like the pitch, this again is not the world's prettiest plugin. I wonder if I can resize it. No, nope, apparently not. I can't do that. Can't make it any bigger or smaller. This is just the size that it is. Okay, well, that's worth knowing. So what I can do, of course, is to move around the central frequency. And as I do that, it's showing me both the frequency that I'm choosing. Remember, this is a band pass filter. So the frequency dial is showing me or the frequency pane is showing me the central frequency. And I can see that there is a width control that's available to me as well. But there's no way for me to manipulate this. So if I double click and try and enter a value is not happy. So I'm going to click out of there and instead what I'm going to do is to come to the controls area where I have a chance to uh, select the bandwidth I want to use. So if I wanted to make the band a bit wider, I can open it up here using this slider. And then if we come back to the remote view, I can see that the band has got a little bit wider. So now I've got a band pass filter on this sound as well. Sure enough, there we are. So again, I could, if I wanted to, record a little bit of movement for this as well. Okay, and there we've got um, some automation back into our remote view because this view is just too terrifying by half. We're used to graphical displays. So what we've got now is this completely repurposed beat loop. Now, you're absolutely right in what you're thinking. Why on earth wouldn't I use the bandpass filter within Logic's auto filter? Well, I've got no answer to that question beyond the fact that this one is going to sound a little bit different, okay? Even though Apple obviously make Logic and therefore the Logic plugins are going to be based on their code. I'm willing to bet that there's just going to be a slight sonic difference with these um, AU plugins than there will be to the Logic ones. So for that reason alone, it's always really interesting to compare and contrast different filters. Filters in particular always have a different kind of tone. There's a big difference, let's say, between a Mini Moog filter and a MS-20 filter. The way that filters are built for different synthesizers gives them a completely different character. Don't even get me started on the 303 because we'll be here all day. But it's worth always just trying out different kind of qualities of plugin to see what sounds you get out of them. But this pitch plugin is remarkable. It's effectively just a slider allowing us to control pitch. Imagine that on vocals or any other sound that you wanted to maybe process in a new and unusual way. And what we've got here now is this slightly sort of ethereal sounding drum beat. Okay, so there we are. So we've got our changes that have been recorded with automation. So in this video, what we've done is to look in Apple's folder of AU plugins. Remember, not Logic's, Apple's. And what we've done is just to begin to explore a couple of the options, and that pitch one in particular, I really advise you to go and check out.